Hey y'all, uh, I wanted to make a video about um, anxiety and grounding, which is something I've talked about before. Uh, I recently, I said this in my last video, I recently wrote um, the GRE, which is like a big test. Uh, and basically the, the week or so before that, my anxiety got really bad. Um, and that's, that's sort of understandable. I mean, right before you write an important test, of course, you're going to be stressed out and anxious about it. But, um, because I have generalized anxiety already, which means that I get anxious when there isn't a reason to be anxious, um, when there is a reason, my anxiety sometimes will go, you know, out of control and it, it's hard for me to sort of function in a normal way. Um, sometimes stress and anxiety like that will send me into sort of this depressed state where I like can't get out of bed, but other times makes me unable to sit still. Um, it's sort of dependent, I guess, on a lot of factors. But one thing that I've always found that is helpful is grounding, which I know I've talked about in probably almost all of the anxiety videos I've made, but I think that it deserves its own video. Um, also because I work on the or volunteer on the sexual assault center hotline in my town. And so not all of the calls that I get on that line are people who have directly been assaulted in some way. Um, a lot of times they're just people who um, are dealing with some kind of trauma in their life, whether that be some severe illness that they're dealing with or something that happened to them in childhood or recent years. Um, and a lot of times they don't necessarily even want to talk about what it is that's causing that. They they just want help to and support in some kind of crisis that they're having right then, like a panic attack. And I find that talking about grounding with them, um, with the people who call me, uh, is probably the most effective thing that I've found that helps people um, because it's really easy to do for yourself and... Um, and it's also easy to be reminded of it because as much as you know these things, like I've told people them before, uh, they call back, you know, the next week. And, and it's hard sometimes in the moment of anxiety, and I know this from experience, to, to draw on your coping mechanisms that you've learned. So I think just the more that you think about them, the more that you talk about them when you're in a good place, uh, the easier they will come to you. And I know that that has helped for me. Um, when I was younger, I was told a lot of these these methods of coping, but I don't think that they really started to, um, well, some of them helped when I was younger, but I think I've, I've brought a lot more in to my life uh, now that I've had time to, to experiment with them, I guess, because some work for some people better than others, of course. So there's like three general kinds of grounding uh, that I know of. Um, so the first one is physical grounding. Uh, and from my experience talking to people, this is really good if you have some kind of like post-traumatic stress, like if you're sort of having flashbacks, um, this can help you bring you back to the present time and more importantly back to, or not more importantly, also importantly, back to your physical being because that's what grounding is all about. It's about bringing you out of your mind and giving you a break from uh, your mind going wild over uh, stress, anxiety, um, etc. So physical grounding can be things like taking a bath uh, and not just taking a bath and, and sitting in the bath and thinking about the things that are worrying you, which would be easy to do, um, but consciously making the effort to feel the water, uh, trace your body, um, feel all the little things on your body that that you can focus your attention on and and try not to you know start focusing on physical flaws because that's really not the point um and and if you do start focusing on those things then just tell yourself like this is not the time I can worry about those things later there is no pressing need for me to evaluate my body right now not that there ever is that need but especially you have to be able to uh separate that from from your need to bring yourself back to um, yourself as a corporeal being. And um, and sometimes it's kind of helpful to remind yourself that 
you're literally like a sack of organs and flesh and that sounds really weird and depressing but it's actually sometimes really helpful and grounding I find that when I'm freaking out about what if I do really bad on this test what if I don't get into the schools I want etc um, then I start to think about well you know what all I am is just it's pretty amazing that I'm a bunch of organs squished together in a bag of skin <laughs> with all these neurons going, doing things I don't understand, and somehow this is making all these complex thoughts come to me, all these predictions about the future and things that I've done in the past. It's it's really kind of amazing, and uh, when you start thinking about yourself in that, in that way, it seems really detached, but it's also sort of bringing yourself back to a uh, sort of reality that we we can't live in that reality day to day. I mean, I can't walk around constantly thinking about that sort of um, way that I am, the the sack of flesh, because I need to be thinking in um, a more existential way, I guess, in order to live in the world and function. But But sometimes it helps to bring you back to that and realize how amazing it is that you can do all the things that you can do to begin with. Um, so other physical grounding, things like, you know, exercise, jump up and down. Uh, like some people have like an object that helps them. So if you have like, you know, those like worry stones that are like really soft stones. I used to have one. I don't know where it is, but um, I used to get those as gifts from family, friends and like aunts and uncles and stuff because I was such an anxious like kid that they would just be like oh here maybe this will help maybe this will help here's a soothing candle um and actually i really i really appreciated all of those gifts and i did have a worry stone and those little um those little worry dolls i don't know if you've ever had those they're like really small they're like little stick dolls and they came in like a little container and you would each one you would like say what the worry is at least is what i did um and then you would put it under your pillow every night and you would like have a worry person for each like main worry that you had or anxiety. You put them under, under your pillow and it was supposed to help you like get rid of them before you sleep. And, and I found that it really did help me as a, as a kid. And um, I still have some of those worry dolls. It's just I, I like having them. But um, yeah, anyways, so having a grounding object can can be helpful if you feel like you're sort of detaching then you want to rub it in your hands and start to feel how soft it is and maybe run your fingers through any sort of embossments on it or something. Um, you can also just clench your fists. Uh, I, I crack my knuckles a lot when I'm nervous. That's probably not the best thing to do. Um, you can also eat something. All of these like physical things that you can do uh, that sort of bring you back to where you are. Um, and another good gra physical grounding is is to focus on your breathing, which is a very physical um, aspect that you don't really think about consciously. Um, and then when you do, it can really help you sort of take your mind off of things. So another kind of grounding would be um, like mental grounding. So that would be sort of describing things that you see uh i find that it's helpful when i'm talking to people who are who are feeling sort of um unsafe uh not like that they are in some sort of immediate danger but they just feel they have a feeling of um they're they're nervous and they they don't feel like they're in a safe place but they are so it, it's helpful if you talk to them and say like okay well describe what where you are like are you at home are you in your bed are you cuddled up in blankets like describe your your where you are in your environment and and it can help to be like yeah I am I'm in my bed um my cat's with me she actually is she's sleeping right there <laughs> um my cat's with me, I have my favorite blanket around me, and it can be really helpful to um, to sort of just point out these things uh, about your surroundings and sort of start focusing on things like that. Um, and it's also good, another method of mental grounding would be to watch something that you really enjoy um, something that can take your mind off of things. I personally like watching comedies when I'm feeling really stressed out. Um, although I also really like watching Lifetime, um, 
lifetime made for TV movies and they're not all comedies. I like to watch the dramas, but, um, <clears throat> I mean, they're not supposed to be comedies, but I find them really funny because made for TV movies are so incredibly campy and ridiculous. So I just like put myself into them and, and like that, I actually watched like probably seven lifetime movies in the past like week and a half. And that was because I was so stressed out that I was like, I'm going to download all these movies and it's going to be amazing. Um, and it was, it was really amazing. Um, anyways. Okay. So the last kind of grounding that I know of, and this is probably one that I have found I use the most. Um, I don't know if that's because it comes to my mind the fastest in those moments, but I really do find that this has helped me since I can remember. And that is uh, a kind of soothing grounding. So that's, that's helping yourself cope in the ways that make you feel good. So saying things like, this will pass. I can do this. I can handle this, whatever is going to happen, I will I will cross that bridge when I get to it. That is something my mom has always said to me and it's always really rung in my head as something that that is super helpful and um and really comforting. Um say things like you're a good person. You are a good person. You will get through this. This is a hard time, but it will pass. Uh you're strong, you can get through it. Things that, you know, might sound kind of cheesy when you hear them, um, but when you say them to yourself and you say them with conviction, you can start to believe them and, and you should believe them. Um, when I am having a panic attack and I lay down and take deep breaths and say, this will pass, this is a panic attack and this will pass and I can handle this, I've handled it before, it has passed in the past, uh, I it, it will again. <clears throat> it, it actually really does help. It helps me bring myself back to the reality, which is that it's a panic attack. It's not actually the end of the world, even though it feels like it. Um, and think about things that you really enjoy, you know, treat yourself to something, uh, picture people that make you feel comfortable. I used to, um, when I was in grade eight, I went to a therapist and because I was having really, really bad anxiety and her method of coping for me was to picture, close my eyes and picture my older brother and me sitting on my grandparents porch. This is something that I described to her. She said, describe the time, a time that you can think of that you were completely carefree sometime that you had no negative anxious thoughts about the future or anything you were just purely thinking about how happy you were in that moment and that was the thought that was the moment that I could think of at that time um and I mean it's still really a comforting thought to me um but it, it was helpful to have that image she made me think about it so in depth that I could feel you know the temperature that it was that day and and the lemonade I was drinking things like that my brother's voice that I've always found really comforting. And so when I had all of those elements brought to the foreground, uh, I was able to, <laughs> Tyler just got here. I'm making a video, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so when I brought all of those things to the foreground, it, it really helped me bring myself back to, um, a comforting place and and it can really be helpful to have maybe not one scenario like I did but I mean one scenario is good or just a general feeling of comfort um people that make you feel that way that you can sort of bring to mind uh so all those things are really really helpful and don't ever feel embarrassed that you need to use any of these techniques I mean uh I've used these techniques at home in my room, but I've also used them in front of Tyler. I've also used them in public and that's fine. Um, <laughs> okay, I should probably go, but uh, I hope this was helpful and yeah. Love y'all. Bye bye everybody. <laughs>